Today's video, we're going to take the cordless saw out and do a little tree cutting. We're going to do a drone flyover of a grain facility on the riverfront, figure out what's making that funny noise on the front of the car, fix what's making that funny noise on the front of the car, take the 755 out, work on the road, run into a few problems. You guys see what happened? And then a drone flyover with some coal barges to finish it all off. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. Hope you're having a good day. If you're new to the channel, we just recently purchased a 40 volt battery powered cordless Royobi chainsaw and we're going to cut this little tree down with it today. I've got half a battery and I just kind of want to see how long a half a battery lasts. I also want to see if that saw has the power to plunge cut through. If you're wondering why this footage looks like it's from a VHF tape, that's because for some reason the SIM card didn't download it properly. So I had to download it into a different editor, which doesn't quite have the same quality, but I was absolutely determined to show the plunge cut with the saw. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut our little notch out in the front. And we're gonna see if this thing has the power to actually plunge cut through the tree. And see that little blurry thing at the bottom? Well, that's the bar coming through. So the answer is yes, it can plunge cut through. I have to say, uh, I had a half a battery. That's what I had for this. I wanted to see what a half a battery got me. I just, anytime I get something new, I just want to use it and use it and use it in different circumstances just to see what it can do. And I have to say, I'm really, really liking this little saw. It is absolutely handy. It's not going to keep me going all day in the woods, but if I just got a little project like this and I don't feel like walking out to the barn and getting everything I need, I can just get on this thing and get it done. As you know, and if you don't know, if you're new to the channel, we show a lot of river footage on this channel. And one of the reasons is we live on a river town and we're proud of that. And we're building the rental cabin that's gonna look like a tow boat or tug boat. I'm not sure, we keep going back and forth on the design. But along with the river traffic, all the barges, I kinda wanna show some river industry. So you get more than just the barges going up and down. You get a little bit of where they're going and where they're coming from. We are at ADM Granary in Rockport, Indiana. The bridge in the background is the William Natcher Bridge. It's crossing from Indiana to Kentucky over the Ohio River. You can see a truck coming around. He's already got his tarp undone. Grain exposed on the top. They're stacked up around the corner. I'll work the drone around here so you can see the riverfront operation. You can see some stoned barges there as well. Those belong to Moser's Crushed Stone. They're just sitting there staged because they have a yard just down river, so they stage them there and move them down river and they need to offload them. But as we come around to the riverside, you can see the belt, the conveyor belt that goes from the granary onto the riverfront. They've got one barge sitting there. They're not currently loading at this time, but you can see if you look look towards the front of that barge, the way it's drafting, the way it's sitting unevenly in the water means they've already started loading part of that barge. And you can see there's an employee right there getting ready to flop a hatch open. They're probably getting ready to load some more today. I didn't have time to stick around for that, but I want you guys to get more than just the barges going up and down the river. I want you to kind of see overall how the industry works. I think it's kind of interesting. I hope you guys find it interesting. We're going to fly back over these silos. We're going to do a quick whip around so you can get a little bit different view at it. And then I have a few pictures that one of our subscribers who is a pilot on the Ohio Mississippi River sent in a few pictures. Okay guys, we're gonna gain a little bit of elevation here. You're gonna to start to see some of the Mulzers barges I was talking about sitting there staged on the side of the river waiting to be offloaded. You're gonna get a little bit better view of the William Natcher Bridge and way in the distance, you're gonna see the AEP coal fired power plant. Sometimes you see in our drone shots, coal going up and down the river. Sometimes that's where it's going. They offload their coal straight from the river off of barges. And if you look real close in the distance, you can kind of see their offloading facility. Now these next pictures I'm pretty excited about. We tried to get a drone shot of Jeff's boat when he came through, but it just happened to be nighttime. It didn't work out. So we sent a few pictures from the wheelhouse. 
This is downriver through Cincinnati. If you want to know what a wheelhouse looks like on the inside, well, this photograph right here is for you. Check that out. That is awesome. Absolutely awesome. And if you remember the empty ammonium barges that were downriver in a drone shot not too long ago in a few videos back, Jeff spotted that same boat loaded. There it is, headed back upriver. And he took a shot, sent it to us. Jeff, thank you for the photographs. Be sure to keep those coming. We'll be sure to keep putting them in the videos. Next, on to the Subaru Outback. As you guys saw at the beginning of the video, we have a little bit of a wheel bearing problem with this 2000 Subaru Outback. Now, disclosure time. I'm not a mechanic. I'm just a homeowner that works on his own cars to save a little bit of money. If you want to see a mechanic work on this car, go to Mr. Subaru. It's a fantastic YouTube page. I'll throw the info card up. If you have a Subaru, it's an awesome resource. Also, if you're new to the channel, no, this is not my normal content. It's just what I happen to be working on this day. So I decided to go ahead and share it. Now, a little bit of backstory on this. Before we get to the backstory, actually, Yes, I want to say, if you want to make a joke about the Subaru Outback and me driving it, go ahead. Trust me, I hear it every day I'm at the fire station. I'm serious, though. Make a joke about this car. I'll read the comments to the guys at the station. It'll give us a little bit of a laugh. We can absolutely use a little lighthearted humor right now with everything that's going on. And I'll even tell you a funny story about it. I was in this Subaru Outback with all of my station clothes and duffel bags one day on the way home from work, sitting outside of PetSmart at 7 a.m. in the morning, waiting for them to open so I could pick up a Christmas gift and a lady came up and offered me money and I'm not making this up because she thought I was homeless in my 2000 Subaru Outback. That is a true story that happened. I share it, shared that on another video before. If you heard it before, I'm sorry, but if you're new to the channel, I figured you could use a little bit of a laugh. Oh, if you are doing this, hey, be sure you mark the orientation of these two bolts right here. The bottom one doesn't really matter. It's the top one that matters the most. So when you put it back together, your alignment is pretty close. Anywho, Back to the backstory. Previously, before I had this 2000 Subaru Outback, I had a 2009 Chevy Colorado. It had the very confused inline five in it that didn't quite know what it wanted to be, and it burnt a little bit more gas than I wanted. Anyway, I got a different career. It was when I started the fire department. I was commuting a little bit more. I wanted something a little cheaper on gas. So I took that 2009 Colorado. It had 180,000 miles in it. I took it into dealership. I did a straight up trade for this 2000 Outback. Now I know based on the years, it sounds like I down traded, but stay with me. The Outback only had 100,000 miles on it, which worked out pretty well in my favor. It's cheaper on gas, it's cheaper on insurance, it's cheaper on plating and registration, and the parts are actually cheaper as well, as far as uh, you know how much they cost. That's what cheaper means. That was a weird way to elaborate that, wasn't it? Anyway, basically what I'm saying is financially, this car makes a lot of sense for me to get as a daily driver for my commute. And the all-wheel drive is absolutely fantastic on this car. I really do like this car. Like I said, make fun of me all you want, but it's a pretty good fit for my lifestyle the way I'm going right now. And also, I do have an old beater truck that if I need a truck for something, I have that available. Now, I'm gonna let you watch the rest of this video. I am just gonna jump in a few times. At the end of this clip, we're going out in the woods to work on the road with the 755, and we have some more barge footage to finish everything off. This bolt right here, though, I just wanna say, be super careful with this bolt. It's very easy to break, and if you break this bolt, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. You're turning a three-hour project into a three-day project, and you just don't wanna do that. You see I'm giving the old tappity 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 tap taps to try to get it broke loose. That doesn't end up working. So I end up just going ahead and taking everything else apart the rest of the way to give myself a little bit better access to that bolt because we're going to end up using the torch. That's that cam bolt I was talking about on that shock tower. That's why you have to mark it with a paint marker or whatever to make sure you get it oriented right when you put it back in there. So I'm showing you this. This didn't want to come out initially, so I just put the punch at the very top. I don't like hitting the top of the threads, obviously, and that has a castle nut. I don't like tapping castle nuts because they get deformed easily, so I just used a punch to knock it out. It came out with a few solid hits. This is that pinch bolt I was worried about breaking. Just kind of giving her a good up and down look over real quick there. Give her a few more tappy tappies. Give it a little bit more lube. Just let that sit for a little bit. Not sure it really matters since I'm going to use the torch. I want to get this axle out of the way so I don't mess that boot up with the flame. Not that I'm getting too crazy with the flame. I just don't want to risk messing that boot up. So I ended up sliding that back into the shock tower, putting the two bolts back in. I didn't tighten them up with nuts. I just put those in so it's a little bit more rigid whenever I go prying on that pinch bolt. 
gives me a little more stability. Took out the ABS sensor. Anything that's gonna be messed up by heat, I wanted to take out of there. Now I'm using an acetylene torch. I don't need that though. You could do a butane torch. There just wasn't one handy in the shop. It's turned down way low. It's not up to what you would use it if you're gonna be cutting something. It's just enough to kind of warm it up, make it a little bit red. Just don't get crazy with it. What you see burning there is one of the seals. That's not a big deal. We're replacing the seals, obviously, so I wasn't too worried about that. Well, we got it. Lefty Lucy, don't forget the Lefty Lucy part. There we go. There it goes. Thank you. Aren't you? Aren't you? Okay. All right. You guys ready to listen to this? You hear it? Also, I'm just... <laughs> let me get you closer. All right, full disclosure, I probably left this on here too long. Check this out, you ready? You watching? Honestly? Not even sure how my wheel stayed on. <laughs> okay, let's fix it. For whatever reason, I lost a few clips whenever I was pressing the old bearings out and pressing the new bearings in, but you just use a bearing splitter. Make sure you take, there's a snap ring in there. You need to take that snap ring out. Make sure you're pushing it the right direction. It needs to go out the same direction that the snap ring was, if that makes sense. There's a cast flange that it sits against. You don't want to push against that. You want to push it out the side that the snap ring was on. And then you just do the opposite to get it back in. Push it down into that cast seat that it has. Set the snap ring in. You're good to go. Get it cleaned up real nice. Get your seal put in. Just some light taps with something flat. Gets that seal in there really well. Don't get crazy with it. It's easy to mess a seal up if you get too excited. It's just a little bit of hammer. Oop. That's what we ended up with. New hub, new bearing. I went ahead and put a new ball joint on. Um, I didn't do a new outer. I probably could have, but not too worried about it. So I'll just put you on time lapse and we'll see if we can get this thing all put back together. All right, so for a guy DIYing, not really knowing what he's doing, kind of fumbling his way through it. it. Took me about five hours to get this knocked out. I will throw a few torque specs up that I used that I found online. In text form, I will give you a little hint. Don't put the brake bracket on yet before you put this all back together because you got to put the brake rotor on first. There you go. But the torque specs remain the same. Anywho, we're going to get this all put back together, head to the house, hop on the John Deere 755 compact tractor, get out on the YouTube yacht road, do a little bit of work. Then we're going to get the drone in the air. There are two southbound barges, one right behind the other. We're going to fly both of them to finish the whole video off.
So we got the Subaru all wrapped up and uh, the noise has disappeared. Seems to be driving better. So hopefully that fixes that problem. I wanted to get out at a little bit of time left of the day. I wanted to get out. You can see things are actually starting to dry up. I wanted to take the little pulverizer attachment behind the 755 and just run it up and down the road a couple times just to see if it would do what I wanted it to do, which is kind of, you know, take the high side and pack it into the low side kind of thing, fill the last little bit of ruts in, especially where we still had a little bit of moisture. You can see there's still some spots with some moisture, but overall it is drumming up, drumming up, nope, drying up nice. Crumming up nice was what I was thinking of there. I just did a couple passes, and then I want to try to fix, there's one spot off the side of the road we did a while back. If you're new to this, and this is what we did recently. We took the skid steer out there, kind of got the ditches and everything cleaned out, tried to get everything closed up nice. So we're just kind of trying to clean up what was left behind by that skid steer mess. We're gonna zoom on down to the spot I wanna work on and things don't go exactly to plan here. All right, so we finally made it down to the spot I want to clean up. This was the spot we had a massive, massive burn pile that was here for years, and we slowly got it burnt off and cleaned up. I was going to do an awesome aerial shot. I was all excited with the drone, a big old aerial time lapse with the drone. Things did not go quite to plan. Check out the lower left hand side of your screen, my right side rear tire. There, see that big poof of air? We'll slow it down for you. See that log as well? Yep, that is a problem. That's gonna shut down the 755 for today. On the bright side, we get to play everybody's favorite game on a tractor. It's called Get to the Road, Don't Lose the Bead. Get to the Road, Don't Lose the Bead. I'm sure we've all played that game before. Well, Sometimes you win, sometimes you do this. But that's hot. Just gotta figure out what the heck it's from. But that'll be another video. So that was after I'd got done doing the wheel bearing on the car. I just wanted to run out for a few minutes with the tractor and play around a little bit. It didn't go to plan. I didn't even look to see what the problem was. I just didn't even want to mess with it. You guys have those days where you're just kind of done and you'll deal with it another day. That's what that was. But check out the positive news here. Driving the Outback down the YouTube Yacht Road like it's nothing. So that's a good deal brought the youngest out we're gonna check it out see if we can figure out what's going on with this tire well Cora what's wrong with the tractor I don't know I don't know either is the tire okay no no it's not yeah. it is flat you guys see what happened okay. it's missing yeah, the valve stem okay. I tell you what though Best case. I was worried that I punctured the inner sidewall of that daggone thing. It looks like it just but pushed out the valve stem. Gas. It might be out of gas too. That's you got a good point. Uh, the valve stem's on the inside because we flipped those around for stability. So uh, yeah, but I may try to find it, that. and if not, we'll just have to get a new one. What's that? Tell me we're not air. Ran out of air. Daggone, we're gonna have to get some more air, it's aren't all we? Gone. <laughs> it's all gone. All right. Little one's up playing in the mud, and I'm down here looking just out of dumb luck, see if we could find this valve stem. Something I do when I look for things, I put a stick, and then I look at the end of the stick, and it helps me focus on the ground a little bit more. Anywho, technique worked, because there it is right there. But, nothing salvageable there. You can see just sheared the daggone thing off. I tell you what, like I said, though, that's the best case scenario. After looking at the video footage, I didn't look that day, because it was just one of those... Um, you know days but after looking at the video footage like crap i bet i shoved something through the sidewall but uh, that is a lot cheaper than a tire so we're gonna call that a win we're gonna get one ordered i suppose i don't know 
The real life Mike got confused. What he's trying to say is, I can't remember if the store that sells the valve stems is open right now because of everything that's going on. But we'll figure it out, nonetheless. I was worried when I was editing the video before I had looked to see what it was. It looked like I shoved that log through the sidewall. I was convinced I was gonna be buying a new tire. Pretty happy that's all turned out to be. And check this out. Finally got the Wapa Choppa decal on the Wapa Choppa itself. If you missed this video, we've done this a while ago. It was a little custom build we did, and then we had a contest with the subscribers to name this thing. It was just some fun audience participation. So pretty excited about that. We're gonna finish the whole thing off with another great drone flyover of some downriver barges. You can see this one just has the regular dry bulk covered barges like we showed earlier. A little stutter there, that was fun. Showed earlier at the grain facility, except he's got one random flat deck barge hanging out the front there which is kind of fun. And then the barge behind him is a downriver coal barge, but it has a different towboat than we normally see. I'll catch up with you in just a minute when we get back to that boat. So what's different about this boat, you see how it just has one stack towards the front there? That means it's just a single screw boat. Typically on the river, we see at least a twin screw boat. Unless, of course, it's like a fleet service or something like that. So it's kind of neat to see a single screw going down river. Thought it was a little different. Thought you guys might enjoy it. We're going to shoot up between these coal piles for kind of a unique shot because I had good weather and good reception that day. This is all I have for this one, guys. As always, thanks for watching. I appreciate all the continued support, the subscribes, the likes, the comments, the shares. It means the world to us. I can't thank you guys enough. Hang in there. Hope everybody's doing okay. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram, be sure to check that out. I do little clips of these barges on Instagram as well. And Instagram is also a great place to reach out if you ever want to shoot me a message. And check out in the description. I typically put my Gmail account in there, and you can always reach out to me on email as well. Hang in there, guys. We're getting through this. Stay positive. We'll catch you on the next one.